Once upon a time, there lived a man named Squidgy Bod. Everything he did was wrong. Everything he touched either broke or fused or tore. His clothes were either too big or too small. But everybody loved him. When he went out, dogs would lick him. Horses would wave their tails at him. And little children would follow him. Which, as far as this building is concerned, anyway, this is really the end of the line, isn't it? Where the camera. The, yeah, where the yeah. pictures actually get put onto film. Yes. Now, this, I assume, is a camera heavily disguised as a tank. <laughs> <laughs> why is it so elaborate? I mean, why not just use a camera on a stick? Um, well, it basically is it, what you say is a box brownie sitting at ho uh, shooting on a kitchen table. All this stuff like glass plates and dials and how's your father overhanging camshafts are 18,000 pounds worth of stuff to give you flexibility so that he can move the camera around, the artwork, project live action through it, hang from the ceiling and Stand on spit head. on the Stand artwork. Head. It's all refinements, but basically all it is is, is just a tabletop with a camera hanging above. And what is this you're shooting in the It's obviously not Nazarene. No, well, this is just a setup to show you on on the Christmas Carol. I mean, if you can see, the glass plate is to flatten everything down. That is what's known as a background. And this is from the see, uh, Bob Cratchit's home. Very often with artwork, you see, as with the stuff you've seen of the camel or the brigand laughing, everything is drawn on the same frame. Well, if you're animating five figures, there's no reason to draw everything, every picture. You'd have to draw five people all the time. Mm -hmm. And then some may be stopping, some may be moving. So what you do is you put it on different levels. This is one of the, if you press it down, the glass is just to flatten it out. That's his sister minus her head and the brother. Then next is the... The next layer is Bob Cratchit, and there'll be a series of cells with him on it there. Cratchit with, with Tiny Tim. When you say cells, can you just explain that? This is a cell. Well, we should see it upstairs in, in Can Paint, Tracing and Painting. But the draw, pencil drawings are transferred onto, drawn onto celluloid, and then painted on the back with emulsion paint, just like wall paint. And there's nothing fancy about the colors. And the cells are used just for this purpose, so that they're transparent, so that the background shows through, and other characters show through. Mm -hmm. So this is quite a complicated scene. This is the, the younger sister runs up to hug her daddy's leg, then Mrs. Cratchit on a separate scene. And the other sister, so that's whatever it is, one, two, three, four, five, six levels. Except this one was static. I think we didn't move that. Six layers of celluloid. When you press it down, it doesn't look like it's celluloid, which is the great secret. So each of these cell, we call them cells. In the they're triacetate film, actually, but what they call them cells have a series of drawings. So this this sister would move for a few drawings and pause, and then the mother moves, and the dad and Tiny Tim are moving the whole time. Obviously, the child runs in later. So it's a, it's a, you move what you want when you want. <laughs> and how did little Tim behave? As good as gold. Hello, Tim. 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 Hello, Tim
He told me coming home that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple and it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day come on, who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. And one of the blockbuster films you mentioned was um, Charge of the Light Brigade, wasn't it? Mm. What was your involvement in that? That was the best um, opportunity we ever had. They called us in very early to do sequences throughout, bridging sequences throughout the film. And we had four two or three minute sequences throughout. We had about 10 or 12 minutes of the film. And we took the fleet to India. Well, I mean, good heavens, yes, we did. We took the fleet to the Crimea from London and didn't do it. It wasn't done as maps or anything. We did it with um, fleets and lions flying in the sky. And, and we did a propaganda section on war. And then we did a section in which England thought she won the war and to to compress history. So we worked in the style of the time, the 1850 punch and Illustrated London News illustrations. And we were given terrific freedom. So it was a different sort of thing than anybody's done with animation and a different use of it in an epic film. How did you, I mean, there the were obviously sequences with, uh, with horses. How did you, did you work just from drawings or did you work from... We did a lot animal? of what's called rotoscoping, which is a fancy word for tracing the live action. You, you film, say, a live action horse running, then you trace it off on this fancy back projection unit which shines through here and you can work in here. And you, you just trace, it's like tracing off the front of your television set if you could stop the film. And so you get the authority of the live action movement and then you develop it further. And that's what Disney did a lot, an awful lot of, I mean, a tremendous amount of, for reference. And we did it rather differently in the Light Brigade. We traced it all off and then we changed the speed and made it all slow motion ourselves and used dissolves and strange devices which we thought we'd invented and then discovered after we'd finished the film and then thought how marvelous we were. We found that Disney had done it in 1952. <laughs> but they hadn't done it the way we had. And they didn't realize that we'd done it before. <laughs> he said. <in> it. <laughs> but it's just using live action in a, in a different way. Or using drawings in a different way. Because there's no reason that animation has to be funny men with big noses, like my brigand laughing. 